Greetings to all. Pleasure to be here to present this uh, uh, research. We are at the initial phases of this research in collaboration with my colleague Leila Meneghetti. Uh, we are from uh, the University of Sao Paulo, the Polytechnic School. So the same university as uh, Professor um, Homer, uh, which is, has presented it before. So it spares us some introduction time. Uh, and we are uh, starting now at uh, the fantastic realm of uh, uh, bamboo structures. We are structural engineers and uh, we are at the initial phases of uh, exploring the potentials of uh, bamboo, especially engineering bamboo for grid shells. Uh, so uh, grid shells are very efficient structures uh, in nature. The um, organisms have evolved to uh, display exoskeleton and shells very uh, sophisticated and efficient as well as uh, uh, man-made structures that are somehow inspired in this efficiency. Um, shells have become very um, uh, popular in the 50s, in the mid uh, middle of the last century. And also grid shells. Again, in nature, we have, can see uh, beautiful examples of these um, reticulate structures, uh, which uh, globally behave like shells, but have uh, some advantages of permeability and transparency. And again, there are uh, very interesting man-made uh, grid shells starting from uh, the end of the 19th century. Uh, so, as I said, shells were popular in the 50s and 60s, uh, and uh, the Sydney Opera House is an iconic shell of the, that period. And in fact, it is a, a, a grid shell cladded by some other elements. Um, they have... Um, lost interest in the 70s, 80s uh, of the 20th century, but uh, they started to be reproposed with more daring geometries by the end of the century. Uh, and nowadays we have um, very um, complex shapes which are proposed and they are mostly uh, grid shells which uh, are, might be cladded like uh, this uh, Zaha Hadid um, uh, center in Azerbaijan, or they might take profit of the uh, uh, permeability and the trans transparency of the grid shells, like uh, 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 using a skin of, uh, for instance, ETFE cushions, which becomes very popular, or glass like in Singapore's airport uh, by Moshi Safdi. So, of course, shells uh, and grid shells especially can be made also uh, of wood. And there is this iconic metropole parasol, uh, which uh, took a profit of the current um, uh, parametric design uh, uh, tools that uh, we uh, can access by these days easily. Um, and here another more recent example of a wood grid shell, uh, again, uh, closed with ETFE. So we can see that these can shells, grid shells can be made of wood and of course we can ask why not with bamboo, right? Uh, and uh, we can have very complex uh, shapes uh, uh, with grid shell here at a smaller scale, but we can see with these benches that we can uh, provide very interesting and daring shapes uh, with wood and why not with bamboo? 
So bamboo also has been uh, applied uh, to grid shells, either natural bamboo or engineered bamboo, but still in at experimental phase. Uh, we have to mind when we are uh, working with shells, which are uh, kind of the prima donna of structural systems, about the global shape. And we favor a uh, few nuclear shapes where the shell uh, behaves in uh, a membrane state. But of course, uh, we can use uh, freeform shapes, more complex shapes where bending might develop as well. They might not be as um, uh, efficient as few nuclear shapes, but they uh, provide a much broader range of shapes which are uh interesting from the point of view of architecture and uh, civil engineering and we have uh to mind about the distribution of the members if we are uh, thinking on grid shells instead of continuous shells right so there are many uh different types of uh distribution of these members um some with uh, advantages with respect to the others, and there are also this, uh, there are disadvantages. Uh, but uh, in general, uh, shells are characterized by double curvature surfaces. So they might be anticlastic uh, or single surface, uh, single curvature, or uh, double curvature synclastic. And uh, that introduces uh, peculiarities for the distribution of the, these lines where the members will run. So if we follow curvature lines, which are the principal curvatures of the surface, we have no torsion on these lines. And on the other hand, if they are not curvature lines, uh, the, uh, they will have torsion. Uh, in particular, at 45 degrees, there will be in anticlastic surfaces, there will be uh, lines which are called asymptotic. And if you follow these asymptotic lines, here in a high part, they are straight lines, but they could be also um, sinuous lines, but they can be produced by straight elements with torsion. Um, so this is a very uh, uh, relevant aspect uh, if we consider uh, grid shells uh, made of uh, wood or uh, bamboo. Uh, so here are uh, some prototypes uh, for grid shells produced uh, uh, with members along the asymptotic line. So we see that uh, we have uh, four, at each point four of these asymptotic lines. This works for um, anticlastic surfaces. Uh, there are four uh, members coming into a node. But uh, the very interesting aspect of this is that you can produce this asymptotic line uh, at, over uh, this anticlastic surface with straight uh, bars. This is uh, very appealing, although uh, it's the less flexible, uh, less stiff um, distribution of the material. On the other hand, if you follow the cur uh, principal curvature lines, then you have a stiffer structure. And e you, if you mu must bend this, uh, if you are working in a no thickness surface, uh, the torsion is not a very relevant problem, but if you are uh, using la a lamellar with a thickness, a lamellar uh, construction, then you need to uh, reduce the uh, torsion stiffness. You must allow this uh, lamellas to twist so that uh, you uh, usually can use these uh, parallel, very thin lamellas. That's the best if you want to follow um, these asymptotic lines. Now, uh, here is um, a traditional now uh, 
is very popular geometric node for uh, geodesic domes. So uh, there is one, uh, this hub, the central connector to which converge several uh, bars. Uh, and uh, the geometry, it's, uh, th these um, hubs are usually normal to the overall surface. And they resolve the complexity of the geometry by three parameters at the bars. So the length of the bar and the angles between the ends, which are uh, uh, squished, uh, and uh, the twist between these uh, uh, ends. So uh, this corresponds in our uh, lamellar grid shell to the torsion, uh, but we don't have to engineer this twist. We just twist a flat, um, a flat uh, member. So that's why it must be thin to have not uh, much relevant um, uh, twisting stiffness. So if we have a double layer system, then it becomes clear the twisting that uh, appears. And if we have a, a, a lamella, then uh, this uh, lamina, lamella must uh, be um, uh, flexible to twisting. Now, um, here we are not considering um, exactly this uh, asymptotic line distribution, but instead we are uh, interested in Voronoi cells. Again, Voronoi cells, we can recognize them uh, in uh, nature and they can be um, uh, obtained through uh, Delonat triangulation. So usually if you take uh, like a geometric systems, they are triangulated. But if you connect the center of these triangles, um, you're gonna have uh, cells with, um, which are irregular uh, polygons with a very interesting property, which is uh, to each node there uh, on, converts only three bars. So you, uh, in principle, can have a, a, a simple connector uh, which absorbs this uh, angle variations, but is uh, has a, a, a simple system to the nodes, right? So uh, uh, in uh, the left side, you can see a triangulated surface. Uh, and uh, on the right, you can see the correspondent um, Voronoi uh, tessellation of the same surface. Now, since you have three bars uh, connecting and uh, you can, in a particular node, have uh, at most two bars in, um, in um, asymptotic directions. At least one bar will have torsion. So this is a, 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 a problem and uh, a characteristic of this uh, choice of using um, Voronoi cells is that uh, they are fitted to lamellar structures, not to thick structures where uh, which have too much torsion stiffness because the bars will uh, twist. So the members must uh, be lamellar. Uh, here are applications of this uh, Voronoi tessellations to uh, grid shell, so very appealing um, uh, structures might, might be uh, proposed. And of course, since we have these lamellar structures, they are prone to uh, buckling of the nodes. Uh, the node might uh, twist around the vertical axis, that's a, a, a worry. 
And of course, if uh, we can have also other types of uh, uh, global buckling of the surface that we might worry as well. Um, this idea of uh, applying Voronoi shell to wood structures and taking profit of uh, a simple connection system has already uh, been used. This is a very interesting uh, connector that we see in uh, recent literature. Um, only these uh, flat plates and uh, uh, bolts which cross, uh, it requires some thickness, of course, to have these bolts uh, inside uh, the bulk of the, the member. So if you are thinking in lamellar uh, uh, grid shells, maybe this is not the best configuration. Uh, maybe this. So uh, here, um, Assis has shown these uh, images from a uh, recent paper also. Uh, at the right, we can see inside these plates, which uh, might provide uh, very good um, connections for uh, Voronoi uh, grid shells. Uh, however, the angles here, uh, these plates must absorb the torsion that we'll have. And so they will not be as regular uh, for grid shells as for, a, 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 or at least for double curvature shells uh, in comparison with planar uh, grids. Uh, and uh, so inspired by this uh, possible application of uh, engineered bamboo to uh, grid shells, especially, especially Voronoi tessellated grid shells, uh, we have uh, started investigation of uh, a system and I will handle the presentation to uh, Leila which will show our um, results so far. <laughs> 